What's up, everybody? This is Chase Fraser with the Mr. House Hack Group. Today, we are talking about how to go about hiring a real estate assistant the right way. And Kristen Rogers is going to tell us how she did it. There she is, the dancing queen herself. Um, <laughs> Kristen, What's thanks up, for joining me. Yeah, hey, thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Uh, this is you know, a lot of these interviews I do are a little selfish because I'm in the process of, you know, hiring an assistant myself and you've been through the process and you crushed it. So um, before we get into that, tell us about you, who you are. You know, if you got a 30 second story, ready, go. Um, I'm just a poor workaholic real estate agent licensed in Oregon and Washington. <laughs> um no love the northwest love all the seasons um love a lot of the people here and uh just strive to leave the world better than how i found it nice i love it um so we'll we'll just kind of jump right into it you recently hired uh i think you called it called it an executive assistant so what led you to make that hire uh, um pulling my hair out <laughs> uh, um you know I'm a huge person of lists and prioritize and what is the priority for that day. And there was always, there's a really good rule that you leave your work at home and, you know, or you leave your work at work and then you go home and you can spend time with your spouse, with your kids, with your sister, with your friends. And I was always making phone calls still on my way home or getting home and working one last deal while dinner was prepping or laundry was going. So I knew that I was at a point where bringing on somebody else um, would help me just live a better life. Got it. So, um, yeah, and I'm sure you've heard the saying, if you don't have an assistant, you are the assistant, right? So um, how did you go about, like, can you take us, you know, you're a systems person. You've just said processes. What was the system process to go about from the time of, holy cow, I'd like to get some time back or offload some of this so I can leave work at work and get to home at home um, to like soup to nuts, A to Z. You know, what what was that process, process like, what it looked like and, you know, how has it paid off? Um. You know, to be a thousand percent honest, I dragged my feet. It's mm. scary when you are thinking about taking on responsibility for somebody else and you don't want to let them down. And I, you also have to be willing to give up, you know, give up part of your work, give up part of your paycheck. You have to trust that whomever you bring on is going to serve people at the same level as you. And I, Chase, I participate in a Monday Mindset Motivation Energy group. It's called MME. And every Monday morning we get together and we have a small moment of silence where you just redirect and you focus on what you want to accomplish that week. And there were so many meetings in 2021 where I said I could use an assistant. I need an mm. assistant, but I just didn't slow down to make the time for it. And Keller Williams has a fantastic program called Career Visioning. And the follow-up to that is called 306090. And Career Visioning is uh, a fantastic thought process that they put into this packet, right? A class where they say, before you bring somebody on, you need to know the vision for your company, for you. Where are you going? It's very unfair to other people if you try to bring them into your organization, if you yourself don't know where you're going. And so um, the follow up to that was 30, 60, 90. And it says, you know, once you've got that vision, once you, you know, you're ready to bring somebody on, here's a fantastic, no guessing game, you know, one, two, three steps of, identify who you're looking for. How are you going to get them? What are they going to do once you have them? And the follow-up to that is, how are you going to retain them? You don't want to spend all this time finding the person, hiring the person to pour all of your heart and soul into them and then have them turn around and leave. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be awful. It's like, hey, great. I'm going to train you for five hours a day for 
six months and then you're just gonna leave and I get to try it all again. Right. So, so, yeah. so tell us, actually, I'm going to back up because I know the feeling of it, it being scary um, of like, you are now responsible for helping somebody put food on their own family's table. Um, and that's like the a responsibility that I never had before. And now it's like, I've got a couple virtual assistants and I help them pay the bills. And it's like, whoa, okay. And what did you do? Like you were just said, talking about the 30, 60, 90, and we'll get into like the process, but did you, what was your prep to that? Like, did you make sure, cause where I'm going with this is, did you have like, do you have a runway of their salary set aside? If so, how much, if you're you know willing to answer that question. Another one is, you know, if you wouldn't mind, like about what are you doing in units? I don't care about production, just like how many units are you doing and what point do you feel like somebody could actually hire an assistant and have that make sense? That's interesting that you, your take on it is more so units than volume. Well, um, I didn't want I, you to spill the beans on your volume if you didn't want to. I can imagine a lot of people say 8 million in volume, you should hire somebody right away. Um, no, I, I wouldn't, I don't necessarily agree with that either. So, and I'm a transparent person. I say I, my heart's on my sleeve. I say it how it is. And sometimes it works for people and sometimes it doesn't. And that's okay. Um, I'm a little bit of the opposite. So if I close 36 transactions in 2021, you know, and I made, you know, 500 million in volume, my experience is in the 36 transactions. Was there a well? Was there a septic? Was it raw land? Did I work with a developer? Are there CCNRs? Is there an HOA? Um, all of those types of things. Where if I closed one home that was five million dollars in in volume, um, you know, I probably didn't get as much exposure. I probably didn't have as much opportunity to learn. So for me, while we have goals in both number and volume. Um, my experience is going to be based off the how many transactions did I close? Okay. So for um, you, it was more of a transaction thing, or I don't want to put words. Well, in your yeah, mouth. and that's what that's what keeps me busy too. So I don't know if there's a right number per se, or if there's a right volume. I know everybody has their own, you know, ideas. But for me, is what am I comfortable with? Your comfortability level, and you have to be able to pay them. But in every in every um, market, it's a different cost of living. It's so, whereas I might say, hey, at 20 homes, I need to hire an assistant. In another market, it might be, you know, here it's 15 or here it's 25. So when, when you are doing all that you can do and you can't do any more, that is the moment when you need to bring in an assistant. Got it. Got it. Again, that's very personalized to everybody in their own unique situation. So, when you reached that point uh, and you started going through the 30, 60, 90 program, um, what was next? Um, well, I went, it was, it was COVID. I said the C word, I'm sorry, you can kick me off. Um, uh, I, I went through the program first virtually and I am a better hands-on learner. I am tangible, I'm, I'm audible. I, I like to be able to see how somebody speaks and ask questions and interact. And while I could do that all on a Zoom level, I took the class again when it was taught in Spokane last year, and I took it in a personal environment. And you pick up different things, different bits and pieces from the whole thing. So I really got to hone in on where am I at? How did I get here? What do I like so far? What do I not like? What would I change? And what what pieces of the puzzle am I great with? What am I comfortable with? What are my good What are my good things? And then some of that is self discovery or just being able to admit what are some of your things that you're not good at. Um, I the minutia, all the behind the scenes thing, the details, writing a manual. Oh God, please spare me. Um, <laughs> that's not my cup of tea going out and sitting across the table from somebody at a Mexican restaurant with food, talking work. Yes. That's me. Let's do all it. Day long. Yes. Um, uh, the guacamole. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm a sucker for food. Um, but besides that, so 
really identifying the vision, who is going to help me get to that vision. So there's a book called Good to Great. It's a fantastic book. Um, Collins emphasizes that it's not so much about the destination as who you get on your bus, so to speak. So if I knew these are the qualities I have, um, you know, these are my ethics and my morals, who can I bring on with me that's going to help me get to that next accelerated level? And so the 30, 60, 90, I will admit, I put my feelers out there on social media and I just said, you know, like, hey, Rogers Realty is looking to hire, you know, who do you know? And it was somebody tagged here, somebody tagged there. It wasn't, it was dismal. It was disappointing. I was like, mm. all these people are looking for jobs and for work. And um, it wasn't a lot. So I took a couple of other teams assistants out to lunch. And I just said, hey, let me take you out to lunch. Let me pick your brain. Why are you so great in the role that you're in? What are some of your strengths and your qualities so that when I am looking for somebody, I can specifically be focused in those areas? And this really, really nice girl named Sarah Hendricks, um, she pointed out that she remembered the advertisements that she read when she was interviewing for an assistant position. And it said specifically, if you like this idea, please submit a short video and, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself. She said it immediately asks people to follow direction. You know, you're going to know if they got all dressed up and dialed in and practiced a rehearsed script for it, or if they just did it off the cuff, if they're comfortable talking to people, um, you know, and she said, it'll weed out a whole bunch. And I said, I love that. And I did that. And out of dozens of applicants, I think three sent me a video. You know, I love that idea. I've done it myself. When I hired a virtual assistant, I had 70 applicants and I did exactly what you said to do. As I said, great, please submit a video. This is after everybody applied and of the 79 replied. So it sounds right. like you probably got the same response rate. Yeah. So I was, again, slightly disappointed because I knew I was still giving five-star service to all of my clients and to the colleagues that I work with and trying to be the best advocate I could for other agents in the office for their new listings and, you know, and being involved in the chamber of commerce. So for me to pull time aside and try and go through these applicants, it was, it's, you know, it's, it's hard for a person like me to slow down. And so we pulled the three and I'm grateful for David Yasa. He's a growth coach of greater Portland. And he said, Kirsten, um, when you are ready for your group interviews, because it's just you, let me know, pull me in, and and I will do this with you. We'll do it together. And I said, you were awesome, dude. We're, so I utilized him. I utilized the 30, 60, 90, and I called every single reference. And I asked them, what's great about this person? You know, how, what are the areas they could improve? And we narrowed it down to two great candidates um, both with a drive, both with, uh, ability. And it's interesting because I say my Jeep is my third office. <laughs> Anything you want in my regular office is also in my, in my car. Um, and then I have an office at home and then I come into the, the market center and I office here as well. And when we finally narrowed it down to the best freaking executive assistant ever, um, I said, you know, I can pick where I want to rent office space from, what works best for you. And mm -hmm. so really incorporating, you know, the whole team environment. And um, it's just been, it's been stellar ever since. I can't believe I didn't have her before because I still feel like I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off and I have help. So Maybe it's time for my assistant to get an assistant. <laughs> Who knows? I don't yeah. Know. yeah. Um, did you do, did you have them run through a disc assessment at all? Yeah, um, we did actually. We did the Keller Williams personality assessment, assessment, the KPA, and that just got a good feel for the abilities to do different types of real estate specific related items. And then we ran them through the disc profile as well. 
Cool. Um, in the disc profile itself, were there certain traits you were looking for or certain ones you were trying to avoid? Um, I don't, I didn't want somebody exactly like me. I'm a very high eye. I'm an energy. I'm a people pleaser. I'm, I'm always on the go. If I can fill up my calendar from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m., I do. <laughs> um, so I needed somebody that was complimentary to me, but that, that had talents that I was lacking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause if there's two of you, then one might not be needed, right? As the saying goes, so you do want someone who would compliment you to like round out the ability or the skill set within the team so that everybody gets service better. Um, so it sounds like, um, you know, I've, I've been taking notes. Um, some of the things that you did that might have really, that maybe other people don't are, you know, send us a video because that's um, sounds like you were able to weed out a bunch of people that way. You could get an idea for the personality. And then also calling every single reference and, and contacting them. It's like, tell me what's best about this person, you know, and, and that. So, and that to some people might be like cold calling. It's like, why would I want to call? I, I've only been called. I know a lot of people have listed me as references, but I've been called maybe two or three times in my life to give a reference. Wow. That's so that's kind of cool. Um, so have you ever been called to give a reference for somebody? Um, you know, it's interestingly enough that I just got called from the Department of Defense. One of my buddies is, um, really? yeah, and that was uh, probably like a 45 minute reference check call wow. about character and how long we've known each other. And they asked some really personal questions. And, you know, I'm just like, I, I, again, very transparent. I say it how it is. And it, I, we, it was cool. We ended up talking about the guy's family and travel and vacation in addition to that. So, I mean, I hope I did a good job for my friend. We'll see. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. So um, these are questions I always ask myself after I do something. Um, so now it's your turn. What did you learn throughout the whole, whole process? Um, shut up and listen. That's, that, that's a massive thing. I, I, my, I was gifted the gift of gab as a kid. I can just, I can strike up a conversation with the clerk at Fred Myers. <laughs> um, so shut up and listen is very important. And it's, you know, you need to be focusing on the bigger picture. So often I'll even do like squirrel and be like, oh, and I'll, the conversation mm -hmm. will go sideways. So kind of being respectful of the other person's time and and the, and the purpose of the interview. Why are you truly there? Because I, if I can get along with almost everybody, that's great. But what's the purpose of it? And sometimes truly the purpose is just to get to know somebody or just to be friendly. There doesn't have to be, um, you know, a, a checklist on the end of the conversation. But um, be kind, you know, everybody has a desire to be listened to. And if somebody has a strength, a lot of times people know what they're good at, but if you have the ability to bring that out in them even more, mm. that's, that's awesome. So I, I mean, like I said, at the beginning to leave the world better than how I found it is, uh, that would be an honor. Helping people get into houses is a bonus. Um, you know, being a great wife is a bonus. Um, but you know, just touching as many lives as positively as possible. That's, that's very cool. Yeah. I, I love that. Uh, what do you feel like you did well throughout the whole process? Oh, oh, geez. Well, I got the best executive assistant ever. Boom. Um, <laughs> right. What did I do? Well, um, can I get back to you on that? I don't know. Nope. Shoot buckets. Um, what did I do well? Sounds like you did prep well. So you can't say that throughout the whole process, you know, like. Um, okay, I go, got one got for it. you. I got one for you. Um, so leading into the in-person in Spokane, the new vice president for commercial development actually, uh, Kira Christman, she reached out to me. I have no idea how she found out I was on the list to go to this thing, 
but she said, hey, this is Kira, new VP for Northwest um, Commercial Leasing. I'm wondering, if, I saw your name, you were going to this event, and I'm wondering if you already booked your hotel. And I just said, oh, like, hi, how's it going? I, like, hold on, let me sit up straight while I'm talking to you. Um, you know, no, I don't have my hotel booked yet. And she goes, perfect. I've got a, I've got a room. It's got two queens. If you'd like to bunk together. And I was like, oh, okay, here's an opportunity, a compound opportunity. Considering that bigger vision picture, I'm going there to learn how to hire an executive assistant for me, you know, the best way possible but to compound that effect for that training, for that growth. Here's somebody who's in a fantastic position, who knows a lot of people, who's reaching out to me to say, hey, do you want to spend time together? Um, bleep, yes, I do. I don't know if you can swear on this thing, so I just said bleep. Um, but Perfect. so anyway, <laughs> so she said, you know, hey, um, I'm going to take a look at airline flights, whatever. And even though I'm a poor real estate agent, um, I, I'm still frugal with money, with spending and finances and sometimes still use coupons. Um, so I just said, hey, you know, we could both fly for, you know, $600. I said, we could jump in the car together. We could have one-on-one -on -one time. We could work while we're driving remotely, whatever. And it would cost us less than a hundred bucks. How do you feel about just showing up at my house and, and you know, we can drive? And she was like, that sounds awesome. So I, I not for selfish reasons, but it kind of came out that way. I got to double tap on that exposure. So on the way there, I ended up driving with Kira Cressman. And on the way back, I got to drive with Molly. Um, she manages a fantastic local team here, Elevate. Um, and so listening to a residential real estate team rock star, and um, really get to bounce ideas off of each other, how we think the market did, where we think the market's going, and then, um, you know, with commercial on the way down. So my one purpose got three times the education for that trip. It was awesome. Nice, nice. What would you do differently? Um, I would, in the interview process, I did very well with calling all the references and getting their references. But if you asked me today where I took all the notes as I was on the phone with them, it wasn't very organized in that sense. Mm. So to, to duplicate the great results of what happened this time, I'd want to do them again, but I'd want to have a more organized space of where I took the notes and who I called and when I called them. Um, and I, I will do that better next time. That is fire. That is really good. Cause I mean, yeah, duplication, that's what it's all about. So how do you, how do I do this again without having to reinvent the wheel? So, all right, last question. It's going to be the hardest one. Are you ready? Um, Go. Favorite Mexican food joint in Portland. Oh man. Okay. Ooh, I love I love Mexican. I love Thai. I love Italian. I love Japanese. I love American. I love I love everything. Um that's stinking hard, but I would say the one that you can find me at most frequently. Um, there's a new little spot called Mezcaluna. It's in the uh, exterior parking lot of Clackamas Town Center, and they have a fantastic margarita flight, which, I mean, they have like a pear margarita and a guava margarita. It's amazing. Um, and they also have tableside guacamole. So they come and somehow they always have the best avocados and they just mash it up right there in front of you. And they add their garlic and their salt and their jalapenos and the onions and um, it's bomb.com. We live about five minutes from Clackamas Town Center. I'm going there. Okay. Didn't know I was going to ask this one, but favorite Thai food place because I'm a huge Thai food. Ooh, oh, oh. Um. Oh, where's there was a great typhoon place. I th I actually think the C word just shut them down recently. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm gonna say it wrong. 
but Surashimi Shasha Tai something. I, yeah, I know. I also really oh, like pho. They have a really good pho across the street from the Thai place. It's downtown Gresham on Main Street. And it's also bomb.com. I love ducks. Amazing. I love a good duck. I, I love all food. Food. Nice. I'm actually, when I get married, if my husband does a tombstone, um, it's going to be food and cursed and have a good relationship. Instead of throwing yeah. flowers on me, you should probably just like put some prime rib, au jus, steamed broccoli, garlic mashed potatoes, a good ribeye. Oh, yes. Ooh, yeah, I love it. My favorite mm -hmm. Thai food joint in the area is uh, Chai Thai, and it's at 140th and Stark. I'm writing this down. Chai Thai. It's incredible. When you go and start, what do you order? Um, I'm how I judge Thai places is on their red curry and then also on uh drunken noodles, but they have oh, something yes. like firecracker or something. But if you go in there, you'll you'll be fine. But the lady who owns it behind the desk is a is like a ball of energy, a firecracker it can be a little snarky, so just be on your toes. Uh, but it's completely worth it. The food's great. So I'm so um, excited. I love yeah, I yeah. love Pad C U and I really I love soups too. I love Tom Yum soup. I love the coconut soup. The soups are just they're so soothing in it, you know, considering how much it rains in Oregon. Um yeah, soups soups are they're good for the soul. Yeah. Well, hey, uh Kirsten, like Sirsten, Kirsten, I appreciate you taking your time. Uh, and, and telling us all about how to hire a, uh, an executive assistant or some sort of an assistant for your business. If somebody wanted to get a hold of you, how would they go about doing that? Um, you can show up on my front doorstep. My door is always open to people. You can also find me at Keller Williams Portland Central Market Center. Um, I drive a lifted black Jeep with gigantuan tires. Uh, it says Mrs. Rogers across the Ooh. side of it, so I'm hard to miss. You can also call or text me at 503-997-7549. Cool. Well, thanks for that. Uh, even though we're in the same market, if anybody's looking for me to help them out buying or selling real estate, uh, you can contact me at 509-393-9123 or chase, C-H-A-C-E at mrhousehack.com. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for tuning in. I hope you got some uh, some good info out of this and we'll catch you next time. Thanks, Chase. You're awesome. Thank you.